not sacrifice the Enterprise. We've made too many compromises already, too many retreats. They invade our space, and we fall back. They assimilate entire worlds, and we fall back. Not again. The line must be drawn here! This far, no further! I will make them pay for what they've done! Battle stations. Hello Trekkies and Trekkers, what is up? It's Cornish Ratbeard here bringing you another tutorial for Star Trek New Horizons. This time we are going to focus on war. In this video I'm going to cover the basics on how we start wars using the claim system and other various ways, how to be effective in that war and how we finish the war, and what terms we should accept win or lose. I will also be going over how we assault planets by landing armies and how effectively we can use them. If this is something you need help with or just a recap, then please stay tuned. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want to discuss are the governments and how they affect how we wage war. When picking a faction, please be aware of certain traits that will hinder your ability to go to war on your own accord. The trait that we are looking out for is the pacifist trait. If the faction you choose has this trait, then you will not be able to start unrestricted wars. The restrictions mean that you won't be able to claim systems to take as your own, but if declared upon, you may use your full force to defend yourself and in some situations, you then may lay down some claims of your own while in that defensive war. Some governments and policies allow your faction to use the Liberation War option while at war. This option will allow you to make some claims on systems that meet the correct priorities to do so. While in a defensive war, you can take the enemy systems, star bases and even occupy planets, but once the war has ended, you will not be able to keep any of the territory you have won, unless you have made claims while in that defensive war. Another handy war goal you could use when playing as a pacifist faction is the demilitarization war goal. If a faction is getting too big for its boots, you could declare war to bring their fleet size down and it will also give them a debuff at the end of the war reducing their naval cap and raising the price of manufacturing ships. Note, you won't be able to keep any territory you conquer during your war. This is again down to the pacifist trait and their ideology in which basically it's not their way of expansion. Pacifists like to use diplomacy as their main weapon by integrating others into their faction by creating big coalitions and defensive packs rather than war and conquering. Okay, so now we're going to use a faction that can declare wars that are unrestricted. What do we do? Using the Klingons as our next example race, we will first want to identify who it is we want to go to war with. The Gorn here looks like a great target to finish off and gain us some more breathing room. But before getting this war on the road, we will want to find out as much as we can about their fleet power and current star base locations, as well as the quality of them. To do this, we will use the espionage system to find out all we need to know before declaring war. This option isn't necessary, but I do recommend doing a bit of espionage before starting any war. If you're not sure about how the espionage system works, then please check out our tutorial on that specific subject. Okay, so now we are ready to lay down some claims. The claim system allows us to choose which systems we are going to take after the war is finished. The more claims you go for, the longer the war will take to finish, especially if you lay a claim down for the opposing faction's capital. They generally will fight to the bitter end because surrendering is not an option for them if their capital is up for grabs. Bear in mind the claims will cost you influence, so be sure to have some of that saved up before starting a war. If you are low on influence, then another option is to lay down one claim for one system, and that's all you need to really do to get the war started. As the war continues, you are saving up more influence, which can be used to lay down more claims. Next, bring up the diplomacy options with the chosen faction and push the declare war button. It will now ask you to set a war goal. This is basically the reason you want to go to war with them. There are other options that you can choose if you have met the correct demands for them. Example, you would need to first declare Gorn as our rivals to be able to unlock the humiliate war goal option. We are going to go with the conquer claim as taking their systems for our own is something we are looking to do anyway. 
So remember to invite your allies if you have any before pushing the declare war button. Now we are engaged in the war, your first priority is to try to knock out their main fleets, then go for the shipyards. This is to stop the enemy from building further fleets. Once the fleets and shipyards are taken care of, it's time to move your troops into position. I tend to use a mixture of different companies such as the assault army and artillery. I normally use a 5 to 2 ratio, so 2 artillery for every 5 assault troops. Try to use a few different planets to produce your armies, as it's much faster and bear in mind the upkeep and cost of the soldiers. It takes time and lots of resources to build up a decent army. Using your fleets to soften up the planetary defences via the bombing option is a good idea if you're struggling for ground troops, but this will cause planet devastation which is in turn will lead to a higher crime rate and longer repair times. I only like to bomb if they have a high garrison stationed on the planet. Once the garrison has been destroyed, I stop the bombing immediately, then land my troops. The options for bombing can be found here, and are dependent on the faction's policies. For the Klingons, we have it set to target military installations, which will cause less damage to the planet itself, but not as much damage to the armies. Or, we could set it to target the planet's infrastructure, which will take care of more military infrastructure and armies, but at the cost of civilian infrastructure and civilian populations. The choice is yours. After the bombing process, we will now want to land our armies on the planet and begin the occupation. To do this, left click your troops and then right click the planet you want to invade, and then instruct it to land armies. The armies will now begin fighting and you'll get an invasion screen pop up. This screen will supply you with all the information on how your invasion is going. Once complete, a pop-up will indicate that the invasion is over and if you have won, you are now occupying that planet. Congratulations! To keep an eye on your war, click this tab here. This screen gives you important info on how the war is going. The more red we see on the opposing side, the better. We want their war exhaustion and occupation sliders to be as red as possible. This will end the war quicker for us. My advice would be to capture as many planets as you can even if you haven't laid any claims to them. This will make them surrender and end the war, which will leave you with all the territory that you first claimed for before starting the war. If you find yourself at a stalemate or you no longer need to be in a war, you could select the settle status quo button and that gives either side whatever territory you both currently have at that point in the war and the war comes to an end. If things are going really bad and you feel it's a hopeless battle, then click surrender and whatever claims the enemy already did will then go to them. Now our next example race that we're going to use for this tutorial will be the Undine. Factions such as the Undine or the Borg don't need to use the claim mechanic to go to war. All they have to do is border another faction and they can simply click the declare war button. The war goal for this faction will be to purge. Another difference while playing as one of these races is the way you take territory. With the Klingons, you would have to finish the war before you can take full control of those systems that you claim. With the Undine, Borg, etc, you actually take territory and have full control of it as you win it, making them great factions to choose for you to wage your wars in. As you start customising captured star bases or even building more of your own while in war, Use your ground troops in the same way that you would do with any other faction, but again, with these guys, you can start to customise the planets you have captured. To finish the war, you will need to do exactly the same process as the other races. One more thing guys, if you find yourself in a defensive war, then I definitely urge you guys to keep your shipyard safe, so they can keep pumping out ships to help you out on the front. I generally tend to keep mine clumped together in the middle of my territory, surrounded by fortress star bases that are all along my borders. The harder it is for my enemy to get to them, the better. And of course, the longer that we will survive. So then we can push them back into their own territory and maybe go on the counter. So I think that just about covers the whole of the war mechanic in Star Trek New Horizons. I really do hope this is of some use to any of you who are just starting out in the game and of course to any of you more experienced players. Did I miss something? Please do help me and the others out by putting down some comments. So if you enjoyed that video and it helped you out then please give it a thumbs up for me it really helps me out. If you're new to the channel and you like what you see, then why not subscribe to both mine and Jamie Play's channel for more playthroughs and tutorials. Well, that's it from me. See you in the next video. Take care and bye bye for now. Make it so.